What's up guys? I'm Nick Davis. Welcome to another installment of 239 Flies. Today we are going to tie the Gangster Gurgler. You guys have been asking for this for a while and uh, going to give you a little backstory of the foam and how it all kind of came to be as well. And we'll go over step by step on how to put it together and get you throwing it in no time. So without further ado, let's do it. All right, so we'll start out with a Daiichi 2546. 1 0. Um, you can tie this on just about any uh, straight shank, wide ish gap hook, uh, but you need a little real estate on the shank because you're going to put a lot of stuff on the shank. Nice preparation there, Nick. Not really, I'm a professional, I promise. Uh, we're going to use green thread on this Danville 210 flat wax. Get it through your bobbins. Still waiting for the loon bobbins. They should be out shortly. They look pretty sweet. Matt Cowley's killed that design. All right, so we'll start at the eye of the hook. Wrap back. Just like the rest of our flies, we're going to go just past the straight portion of the shank. And the bobbin should hang on the thread just past the barb. Take our scissors, strip off the tag. Throw the trash on the floor. Next, this is a uh, hot orange uh, medium cactus chenille. Start a lot of our flies with that. Makes a nice either egg sac or bleeding gills suggestion. Helps keep the tail from fouling around the hook. Wind that on. And then start wrapping and palmering. And Arnold Palmering, may the king rest in peace. Arnie Palmy, tie that in. Trim that off without destroying all of it. Next, we'll take a pair of eyes. Made these this morning. If you want to see how the eyes are made, we got a video for that too. Hold those eyes in when you tie them on. Off to the side so they kind of splay outwards a little bit. You don't have to tie this fly with eyes. Uh, I do, because it looks cool and it's a little, you know, a little something extra because I like to see how many materials I can cram on a hook shank on just about every fly I tie. Um, but if you don't want to go through the trouble of making them, you certainly don't have to. I really don't think the fish care, but you know, it's all about the it's all about if the person throwing it cares. So. Tie these on there and secure these bad boys down. Should be splayed out just like that. We're going to start next with some, uh, this is hairline dubbing pseudo hair. Again, if you don't have a lice brush, uh, you should. This is the best fly tying tool that no one knows they need until they have it and then they wonder how they live life without it. Uh, it will change your life. We're going to cut three, maybe four small clumps off of this hide. Three and a half for honesty. And this is uh, sand colored. We're going to tie the natural, natural color scheme today. And just going to twirl it in your fingers, your fingers. Hold this thing down. You're going to brush out a little um, under, under fluff of this synthetic. And you see all that stuff you pulled out? That's going to make your fly look so much cleaner when you're done with it. Twirl it together. You can pull out the longs. Let's just set it down on the desk in front of you. Put the sand aside and grab your cream pseudo hair. And you're going to cut the same, about three, four clumps of that, small. And you'll figure this out when you're tying it. You know, if you, if you cut four giant clumps and you go to tie it on and it's a half inch thick on the hook shank and it just looks disproportionate, you're going to be like, uh, okay, uh, maybe a little, next ne little less next time. So a little trial and error is all you need. Grab your brush again. All right, so next we've got our sand cleaned up, we've got our cream cleaned up, and we're just going to take them 
and we're going to match the tips up and stack them. And we're going to tie the sand on top and the cream on the bottom. Take our lice brush again, put a few combs down the butt section of those. Just kind of clean this up a little bit. You can kind of tell with your fingers. When you're done, it should be about the, the circumference of maybe a third of a pencil. And if you're tying it on a bigger hook, you know, you can, uh, you can make it as long or as short or as thick or as fat as you want. It's really up to you. I'm just showing you how I do it. We're going to tie that in right on top of where we tied our eyes in. We'll take our lice brush again. Pull all the fibers straight. Give a little twirl with our fingers. That looks pretty buttery. And then before we put the bars with the Sharpie on it, I'm just gonna come in here and kinda just trim this up a little bit, make a little bit of a taper, a little bit of a ramp. It's gonna make it a little easier when we go to put the next materials on here. few thread wraps over that. There we go. Money. I'm going to grab a brown Sharpie. You can use black if you want to. I prefer brown on this color scheme. I like to put the black bars on the uh, uh, black and purple. I'm sorry, the pink and purple and black color scheme. Um, you know, I like stuff to coordinate. I'm sure you do too. Next, we are going to get out our brown medium Homer chenille. This stuff is the truth right here. And we're going to cut a section eh, a little longer than we need, maybe two inches. I'm going to grab it. And we're going to tie it on right on top of the tail. And it's going to be real close to the, uh, to where the pont or where the uh, pseudo hair starts. So we're going to cover this, grab our hackle pliers. Make life easier on yourself. Start palmering on top of the tail. You put two in there. You don't have to go too, too crazy with it. I put two on top of the tail. And working back, we're going to put maybe three or four kind of behind that little. Right, so pull this forward and just put a few thread wraps over it. It's looking good. Next. In the DIY kit is included the medium crystal hackle by Hairline Dubbin. Um, the kit includes this because I did not want to force you to buy a uh, $40 or $50 uh, feather cape uh, and then have to use it for uh, one or two flies only. And I'll tell you what you can even do. You can even take your black Sharpie. simulate this being barred, like the barred grizzly hackle, over top of this. And when you palmer it in, it's going to look barred and give you that look. This is, I want to say for a pack, three or four dollars as opposed to a grizzly cape that is 40 to 50. So again, if you want to do it, we'll make it available. In the meantime, I'm not going to force you to front that bill. But grab your hackle pliers again. Grab this and start going. Just make sure you pull this forward as you palm her back. I really like this stuff. And when the fly's done, you, can, you can't even tell that it's, it's not a, a real palmered hackle on there. So I'm sure the chickens appreciate it too, the roosters. Pull that forward. Put a few thread wraps over top of it so we can schlick all those, all those back. Take our foam. Take our ruler. Here's the trick to this stuff. When I first started uh, tying these flies, and I was first tying, you know, commercially, uh, I had a customer who said, hey, I, you know, I got some gurglers from you. They look great, I love them, but uh, they don't float. And I thought to myself, what do you mean they don't float? Of course they float. And 
So I thought to myself, how can I never, ever, ever get negative feedback about, my fly, about this fly again? And I was like, well, it's a topwater fly, it should float. So let's put more foam on it. So I thought to myself, we'll do two layers of foam. And there's no way it won't not float. Um, so I went to go glue two sheets together and I thought to myself, why shouldn't we do the same color? Well, let's do different colors. Uh, so I glued two different sheets of foam together and the rest is history. Uh, I usually cut this just under uh, a half an inch in thickness. You can do this on top of a cutting board or if your boy Shipyard Inc. makes you a cutting board table that you're not afraid to put some scores in, score it on top of your table. So now we got our foam. We're only going to use half of it. Trim this up. That's generally all you need. About that much. Maybe two and a half inches. And I'm going to cut out a little V, a little tie-in point. And we'll bring the thread to about halfway through the hook shank between where the crystal hackle finishes and the eye of the hook. And I'm going to tie it in. Pink side up at first. Because I want that to be on the inside of the fly. Tie that in, pull this all the way back to where, we're going to tie it in to where the thread comes all the way back to where the crystal flash is tied in, or the crystal uh, hackle. There's no gaps. And we're ready for our next material, a little EP tarantula brush. Hairline Dubbin also has a new product out that's like a, uh, it's like a chenille that's very similar to the uh, tarantula brush. And, Gonna get some shortly and try it. I got a sample of it and it looks really nice. It comes in a bunch of colors and it's like half the price and looks pretty cool. Can't wait to try it. Again, with the diarrhea of the mouth. All right, now we got this tied in. We're gonna start palmering it. And we're gonna palmer it pretty tight. We're gonna use, we're gonna use some of this. It's gonna help with the durability. We got enough foam that we're not going to worry about the weight of the wire or weight of the, or the buoyancy of it. There's plenty of it. Get a tie in point, work the thread around it and tie it off. A few securing wraps. Get a pair of scissors you don't care about or some wire cutters. Snip off the excess. Pull the fibers back. Try to get all the little the little fibers slick back and wrap some thread over it. All right, that looks good. This is Mason Hard Mono, 30 pound, like we've come to know and love. Uh, I never put like a 50 pound weed guard on, on a fly. I know a lot of guys do and they don't worry about it, but you know, where I fish, A, there's not a lot of weeds and B, I just, you know, you guys have watched a few videos know how kind of anti-weed guard I really am. I understand they have a place, but I also understand that their job is to keep stuff off the hook. And the last time I checked, the hook's job is to get stuff caught on it. So, yeah. So we just flatten the corner of, uh, of the basin, and we're just gonna tie it on, put a few wraps behind it, get it to kind of stand up like that. And if you get a few fibers caught up in it, no worries, we'll clean that up later. We're gonna fold the foam back over, figure out how much of this bend you want. You know, if you want, if you want it back there, put it back there. If you don't want any bend, put it up there. I normally put it to where it just, if you're looking down on it, you can still see the crystal hackle behind it and you press down on it. It lets me know that I'm in the ballpark. It lets me know my proportion is about right. And then start wrapping over it. Pull the front of it up, hold back all the other materials, and we're going to put a bunch of thread behind the weed guard, but in front of the lip of the fly. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a little thread dam, and it's going to keep that front piece sticking up, which is going to give you that pop. Whip finish. And then we're going to trim the front. 
I'm going to leave a little bit of an extra lip on this because I know that's the way Nick Sergio likes to fish them. So I'll leave a little extra. I mind him. And that's about that. You can use the Loon Hardhead, which I really like. Yellow, we'll use that. Actually, we'll use both because, well, that's just how we roll. Kind of lay some on there. And kind of spread it on with your bodkin. Again, another tool that I didn't know I needed until I had. Never bought a bodkin before in my life. I always just use toothpicks. Get a bodkin from Loon. Good Lord. For purposes of demonstration, it doesn't really matter. We just put a little on there now. And it's for Nick. Who cares? That with the light. Good to go. And that, my friends, is how you tie the Gangster Gerber. Sexy.